Hey guys, this week's video is slightly more serious than our usual videos. We're going to be looking at the different signs and symptoms that you should be aware of, which can potentially indicate cancer. Now, we're going to work through the entire body, looking at different signs and symptoms for everyone to be aware of. I think it's super important that more and more people are aware of these sort of symptoms. But please do remember, if you have any of these signs or symptoms, it doesn't automatically mean that you have cancer. It can be caused by many different other things as well, but what I want you to remember is if you know anyone who has these sort of signs and symptoms or if you have any of these you need to pick up the phone and make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional as soon as possible that is the most important thing now before we begin I understand this is going to be quite a long video so if there's any specific information that you want to find I am going to chat to this video I'm going to timestamp it in the description below so please feel free to click on that description find the information you want and click on it or watch the entire video video. I would highly recommend that everyone watches the entire video, but that option does exist. Now, as some of you may already know or may have experienced, cancer can have a massive impact on people's lives. And it's thought that one in two of us will develop some form of cancer at some point in our lifetime. In the UK, about 300,000 newly diagnosed cancer cases happen every year. Now cancer can affect anyone at any age, but it's more commonly seen in those who are 50 and over. The most common types of cancer include breast, lung, prostate and bowel cancer. However, there's over 200 different types of cancer and it can all have different signs and symptoms that can affect everyone differently. So what exactly is cancer? Well, cancer is a disease where genetic changes in our body cause cells or multiple cells to grow and multiply more than they're meant to. Now these cells can grow in abnormal ways leading to something called a tumor. And the way that these cells change in a tumor can sometimes actually affect our core body systems, such as our immune system, our hormones, and our bloods, which can lead to various other problems. And in some cases, the tumor can actually spread away from its primary site to other organs and other parts of the body. This is known as metastases. This form of secondary cancer is much harder to treat than when it's at its primary site on its own. Now, this was a very simple explanation of cancer, but I think it's important for everyone to have this basic understanding as we then go through the video. So with cancer having the potential to cause so many problems and being so common as well, this is one of the reasons why I decided to make this video, to make more and more people aware of these signs and symptoms just to be aware of that could potentially indicate cancer and to get advice straight away from your healthcare professional if you have any of these signs and symptoms. We know from studies that if cancer is caught earlier, you can have a much better life, it has a much better chance of treatment, and hopefully a longer, better quality of life. So, with all of that done, now let's begin working through these signs and symptoms. Okay, so first of all, let's begin with the general signs of cancer. We're not gonna be working through body parts yet. We're just talking about the general signs of cancer for everyone to be aware of. I'm gonna number these so they're easier to remember. And also, like I've been saying at the start of this video, please remember, if you have any of these sort of signs, make an appointment urgently to speak to your healthcare professional. And please, please remember, it doesn't automatically mean that you have cancer. It could be something else that's causing it. But the most important thing is that you pick up that phone and make an appointment to speak to a healthcare professional so it can be investigated sooner. That's the most important thing. Another thing to remember is even if you don't have any of these symptoms, if you feel like something isn't right because you know your body better than anyone else, so if you feel like something just isn't right, again, pick up that phone, make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional. There's no harm in being safe and getting things checked out. So general symptom number one, feeling very tired all the time. And what I mean by that is, look, it's normal for you to feel tired after an extremely exhausting day, or if you haven't been sleeping well, or if you have certain medical conditions, for example, if you're depressed, or if you have an underactive thyroid, or if you suffer from iron deficiency anemia. All of these causes as well, I will leave in the description below as well, I'll leave more information on them. But if you don't know what the cause is for this tiredness, and you're feeling tired all the time, 
then please make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional so that they can investigate, they can do some tests to find out exactly what is going on. Moving on to general symptom number two, feeling pain without any explanation for it. So what I mean by that is, if you've been out gardening, if you've been up digging, or if you've been out exercising and you're finding a bit of pain somewhere around your joints, around anywhere, any muscle that you've been using, this is pretty normal. But if you've got a random pain, all of a sudden without any cause for it, and it's lasting three weeks or more, then you need to make that appointment with your healthcare professional so they can investigate and find out what is going on. Moving on to general symptom number three, unexplained blood loss. Look, it's quite normal for you to bleed if you've cut yourself, but if you have any unexplained blood loss, so you don't know what the cause for it is, then you need to make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional and get that checked out. And that blood can be in anywhere. It can be in your saliva, it can be in your stools, it can be in your urine, it can be in your vomit, it can be in your vaginal discharge, any of these sort of places, if you're finding any blood in there, please make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional. Please do not leave it. If you see some, some blood in your poo, do not leave it. Make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional. Now, unexplained bleeding also includes if you have any blood between your menstrual periods or if you have any bleeding during or after sex. Now please do remember as well, if you've just started a contraceptive pill, you can sometimes get irregular bleeding known as spotting. This can happen for about a month, up to three months actually it can happen, which is quite normal. If it does continue as well, or if you have any of these symptoms that I've just spoke about, please do make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional so they can check it out and find out what is going on. Moving on to general symptom number four, it's all about lumps. If you spot a lump anywhere on your body, please make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional and let them know if it's painful, let them know if it's been getting bigger and let them know how long it's been there as well. And general symptom number five, I think this symptom is probably one that not a lot of people know about. I think the other ones, quite a lot of people do know them, but this one is all about night sweats. Look, if you're someone who sweats at night, sometimes if you're very anxious, it can happen. Sometimes if you have low blood sugar, it can happen. And sometimes if you have a bit of an infection, you can have a night sweat which can happen now and then. Another thing as well to mention is if you're menopausal, you might have hot flushes. Again, you might have a night sweat. So there's some causes for these. But if you're someone who's having night sweats and there's no causes, or you're waking up and the bed sheets are absolutely drenched, or you're waking up regularly because of it, you need to again make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional and make them aware of this so they can investigate it further. Okay, so with general symptoms now out of the way, the next thing I wanna discuss is more respiratory. So we're looking at coughs, we're looking at breathing, we're looking at speech, your voice, those sort of things. So let's first begin with a cough. Now, I know at the moment, whilst this video is being filmed, it's the COVID-19 pandemic. So, as you're all aware, if you develop a new continuous cough, you need to self-isolate and you need to arrange a COVID-19 test and follow the guidelines that are there for your country. In the UK, that's the current guidelines, but I will leave more information and links in the description below on this. Now, let's say, for example, you developed a new cough, you don't have COVID, or you've had COVID and you've recovered, and that cough has continued. You've had an ongoing cough for three weeks or more. If this is the case, so if you've had an ongoing cough for three weeks or more, you need to get an appointment made with your healthcare professional so they can check you out and find out what is going on because a cough of three weeks or more can put you at higher risk of lung cancer. So this is something that they need to be checked out by your healthcare professional. Now, the second thing I wanna discuss whilst we're on the respiratory topic is breathlessness. Look, it's normal to be breathless after a long run or some strenuous exercise, but if you're breathless for long periods of time, then this is something that needs to be checked out. Obviously, there are sometimes reasons for breathlessness, causes for it, for example, if you're obese, if you smoke, if you're asthmatic, if you have COPD, all of these can be potential causes for the breathlessness, but please do not self-diagnose this. If you are breathless for longer periods which aren't normal, then speak to your healthcare professional, get yourself booked in and get this checked out. As again, if you're breathless for long periods, it can sometimes be a sign of lung cancer. And the third thing I'd like to discuss whilst we're on this respiratory topic, this one's more throat related, is a hoarse voice. So if you've had a, a cold um, or if you've been feeling unwell or a sore throat, this can cause a hoarse voice for a bit. It can cause a croaky voice. It can cause a raspy voice. It can cause a bit of pain when you're swallowing. It's quite normal. But if it lasts for three weeks or more, then again, 
please make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional and get it checked out. So now let's move on to signs related to the skin. The first thing I want to discuss is moles. Now, moles are normal, we all have them, we're born with them, they're quite normal. But if you develop a new mole, so you've never seen a mole there before and you develop a new mole, or you see any changes in a current mole, and by changes I mean a change in its size, it becomes itchy, it starts bleeding, it starts crusting, it starts oozing. So any changes like that to a current mole that you've got or any new moles, then again, please make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional about it. You can also use the ABCDE checklist to help you identify a melanoma early. Melanoma is a type of skin cancer. I think this is a really useful checklist. I am gonna leave more information about it in the description below. It's definitely worth giving it a read and trying to remember this, this ABCDE checklist especially when you're checking your skin. Now the second thing that I want to discuss is skin or mouth sores that don't heal. And what I mean by that is look, it's normal when you've hurt yourself, you've injured yourself, it takes about a week for a sore or a scar to heal. However, if you find that it's taking several weeks for a skin to heal or a mouth sore to heal or if it still hasn't healed after several weeks, please make an appointment again to speak to your healthcare professional so it can be reviewed. Moving on to the third point, which is all about breast changes. Look, breast cancer is more common in women than in men, but it can still happen in men too. So please remember that anyone can be affected by it. Now it's quite common for your breast to change during your menstrual cycle, when you're having your period, or during pregnancy. But please remember to check for any permanent changes in the size, in the shape, or the feel of your breast. So if something doesn't feel right, please get it checked out by your healthcare professional. Another thing to be aware of is any discharge, such as fluid or blood coming from your nipples. Now, a small degree of this is normal during pregnancy or if you're breastfeeding. However, please still make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional about this so they can check it out. Another thing that I'd like to discuss as well is the NHS five point plan, which is all about screening your breasts routinely and regularly monitoring them. I will leave a link to it in the description below. It's really, really useful. It's a great website, it's a great page with some great information on it that everyone should be routinely doing and please do check it out. And point number four is any other skin or nail changes. Look. Get used to looking at your body, get used to looking at your skin, look behind you as well where you can't see using a mirror. If you can't see everywhere, ask your partner or a friend maybe that you're very close to, to have a look for you and get used to doing it routinely. That way if you spot anything that's out of the ordinary, you will know straight away to speak to a healthcare professional about it. And with regards to nails, one point I want to discuss to you is just to look at your nails quite regularly look for any black lines in them. If you ever see a black line in your nail, again, this should be prompting you to speak to your healthcare professional as soon as you can. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to discuss are signs related to eating and weight loss. So the first thing I'd like to discuss is difficulty swallowing. The medical term for this is dysphagia. So we should all be able to chew and swallow food easily without having any pain or difficulty or having any food coming back up. Now with dysphagia or difficulty swallowing, whatever you want to call it, if you find that you're choking on food, you're finding it difficult to swallow the food, it's coming back up, you're constantly drooling, you're having any difficulty swallowing with it and you're coughing as a result of it, this can be a sign of dysphagia or difficulty swallowing and it should be signaling you to speak to your healthcare professional about it so they can find out what is going on and what is causing this problem. Moving on to point number two, which is all about heartburn and indigestion. Please do not panic. I know this is very common. A lot of people suffer from it who are overweight, if you're pregnant, if you eat a lot of fatty foods, a lot of spicy foods, if you're on certain medicines, many people can get heartburn and indigestion. But what I want to ask you is, is your doctor or your healthcare professional aware that you have heartburn and indigestion. If they're aware, great, they'll probably be actively monitoring it. They might have sent you for an endoscopy where they send the camera down the throat to see what's going on. But if they're not aware, please do make them aware of this because they need to know, they need to be aware that you've got these symptoms and then they're gonna check for some red flags and ask you loads of questions and do the investigations that are necessary to make sure that there's nothing underlying to be worried about. Now, if you're especially if you're 55 and over and if you've had any weight loss or if you've got any dysphagia that we just spoke about, these are real sort of red flag symptoms that you should be aware of and should really prompt you to speak to your healthcare professional. But even if you're under 55 and you don't have these sort of symptoms, but you've just got heartburn and ingestion, please make your healthcare professionals aware of it. That is the most important thing. Moving on to point number three, 
appetite loss. Look, it's normal from time to time to lose your appetite slightly if you're slightly anxious, if you're not feeling well. However, if you feel like your appetite isn't going back to normal and you're still having a very, very low appetite, you don't want to eat, you're not in the mood to eat, you're not feeling hungry, please make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional. Don't leave it too late until you've lost all your energy, until you've lost all your weight before you speak to them. If you feel like your appetite isn't going back to normal, make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional. And point number four, which is all about weight loss. If you've lost quite a lot of weight without even trying, so you haven't intentionally tried to lose weight, you feel like your clothes aren't fitting you properly anymore, they're feeling loose and baggy, so you've had unintentional weight loss, especially if it's happened quite quickly as well and you're noticing it, then please again, make an appointment to speak to your healthcare professional. This is super important, so any form of unintentional weight loss, so nothing's changed in your life, you're still eating well, you don't really feel like anything's changed, you feel like your clothes are suddenly fit, feeling a lot looser and you've lost a lot of weight, speak to your healthcare professional please so they can check you out and find out what's going on and do the relevant investigations. Okay, so next up we're gonna go through signs related to bladder and bowel habit changes. So the first thing I wanna discuss is bloating and feeling bloated constantly. Now it's quite normal for you to feel bloated now and then occasionally when you feel like your stomach is all puffed out and you feel all puffy around your stomach and stretched. That's probably the best way to describe it, all stretched and puffy. Um, this can happen quite commonly when you've had a heavy meal or if you've eaten certain foods that cause bloating like beans, cauliflower, broccoli, onions, um, or if you've had lots of fizzy drinks or if you've got celiac disease or especially during your period, some people feel a bit bloated. So it can happen now and then occasionally for certain reasons. But the key message here is that if you suffer from bloating, so that stretching, that feel of bloating on your tummy for three weeks or more, even if it comes and goes, okay, so if it's for three weeks or more, you need to be speaking to your healthcare professional. So even if it comes and goes and you've got it for three weeks or more, don't leave it, don't think it's gonna be getting better on its own, just speak to your healthcare professional, make an appointment so they can find out what is causing this. The second point that I'd like to discuss are any changes in your toilet habits. So this can be if you're having any troubles peeing or if you've noticed any changes in your bowel habits. These can all suggest a potential underlying reason, underlying cause, which is actually causing them, and they will need investigating. So you need to speak to your healthcare professional about them. I will leave a full list of different symptoms that you might experience when you're peeing or with your bowel habits in the description below for you. I'll also try and leave some here as well in a box um, just for you to read up on. It's super important though that if you get any sort of difference, if you notice any difference in your, in your toilet habits, then please speak to a healthcare professional. So that's it for this week's video. Cancer can be a very difficult topic to talk about and it can affect a lot of people. So if you want more information on any of this that we spoke about today and also on charities that people can get in touch with for more information or support, I will be leaving all of these in the description below. And please do remember that in today's video, Video, I've gone through some common signs and symptoms that could potentially indicate cancer. It doesn't automatically mean that you have cancer if you have any of these signs and symptoms. It should just be prompting you to speak to a healthcare professional. But please remember, I've gone through the most common signs and symptoms. The list is vast. It goes on. There's a lot more things that if you want more information on and you want to be aware of that you can learn more about, which I will leave in the description below. I'll leave links to them for more up-to-date information that all of you can learn. But the most important thing to remember is if something doesn't feel right, because you know yourself better than everyone else, if something doesn't feel right, pick up that phone or go to your doctor's surgery, make an appointment to speak to someone as soon as you can so they can investigate and find out what is the cause for that. That's the most important thing to remember, just if anything doesn't feel right, speak to someone and we remember we spoke about the science behind cancer and we spoke about the evidence behind spotting things earlier and how much of a significant difference it can make. Thank you for watching this week's video. I really hope you find this information helpful. Always remember that you are awesome and I will see you next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to click that like, follow or subscribe button now to stay up to date with new weekly videos.